collectors of recyclables called Abuma Kareza have become a common sight on streets in South Africa. Many of them have been turning trash into cash with some extra help also from a social entrepreneur. Channels Television South Africa Bureau Chief Betty Divya brings us that story. This is not a trolley race. Nor is it a street chase. It's become part of a daily push for survival. They're called Abu Mahereza, or recycling hustlers, estimated to be over 40,000 across the country. Recyclable materials vary from glass to plastic to metal. The metals, especially aluminium, fetches them more money. Sometimes we get it. Aluminum, copper, then I'll get it more money. Five o'clock, maybe. These trolley men brave the harsh weather, start out quite early, brave the barking dogs and security operatives in their search for material. This is the process. They scout for recyclables from bins the day or hours before the city-owned trash trucks arrive, find where to sort. They then sell to recycling companies according to the weight. The total weight is 8 kg. Then we times it by our oh, just eight times one grand seventy which they get as much as ten US cents per kg for some yeah, material. Yeah. There is camaraderie but sometimes tough battles as well. There are also challenges with controlling the trolleys, especially when they're full. I'm an actually an economist okay. by training, yeah. Inspired by his own garbage collector, 32-year-old Sefiso Ngobese is an investment banker turned social entrepreneur. He did something about the trolley. This is a trolley with uh, reflective material. What you can do here, you can just pull this thing. So it gives an allowance either to push the trolley or once you want to pull it, you can lock this thing. The biggest challenge that they face on a daily basis are the trolleys that they use. They break down easily, they've got poor visibility. So. We at Unconventional Media, we created a much more safer and durable trolley um, that allows them to collect more waste and therefore they can earn a better income. Secondly, uh, the trolley doubles up as a mobile billboard where companies can put branding and advertisement on the trolley. Uh, it's a social enterprise whereby if a company, for instance, advertises on a trolley, 10% of those advertising profits get distributed to the guys who are within Abu Mahadaza project. The adverts cost nearly $200 a month. Vusi Nguenya uses the fancier trolley and he has no regrets. If it's full, like many of your stuff, they can't fall. You see, they are safe inside there, but it's heavy. Now, Safisa also buys the recyclables from them at his own recycling yard, which he then resells to companies that need them. It's still a rough road business wise, he says, but he believes in what he's doing. And for Diabo Macheresa, their lives are improving one trolley trip at a time. Yeah, I'm happy because I've got nothing to do. Chiko Musana has moved from sleeping in the open park to a rented room. From Johannesburg, South Africa, Betty Divya, Channels Television News. Well, time for one more success story this week, and it's a tasty one too. Most of the world's cocoa is grown and exported from Africa, but a company called the Chocolate Mamas is producing Tanzanian chocolate from local cocoa. Rud Almendop has more. An African sweet surprise nurtured on African soil, ready for sampling in Chocolate Mamas, opened a few years now in an uptown shopping mall in Dar es Salaam. Natural flavor, not too sweet. Mm -hmm. These tourists can't wait to taste some of the local candy, which otherwise would have been imported from overseas. I don't normally eat chocolate, you know. So, but this one, yeah, definitely I'm going to take it. <laughs> 35 year old Jackie Kiweka is the founder of Chocolate Mamas. She got the idea for chocolate making when in another job she was dealing with the high price for imported chocolate, while in Tanzania the cocoa beans were available. And then we were thinking of how we were going to get a good constant supply of chocolate and we couldn't figure it out because it was going to be very expensive to import all the chocolate. Then we said, hey, 
we should make chocolate because there's exported uh, cocoa beans, but nobody else is making chocolate in Tanzania, so that's what we should do, and that's what we did. The chocolate is manufactured in a workshop in Dar es Salaam from cocoa beans that were procured locally from farmers in Tanzania. <laughs> Jackie targets middle-class customers and sees the demand growing after a slow start. When we started making it, everybody was a little skeptical about this chocolate that's being made in Tanzania, like what? And then, but then everybody that tried it came back for more. And even though Jackie opened three shops now with local chocolate, it remains small compared to the massive raw cocoa export from Africa. But it's a start and it can grow as other Tanzanian producers may follow. This is Ruth Almondor for The Voice of America in Dar es Salaam. Well, and that's our show for today. Be sure to watch Africa 54 throughout the week on the VOA website at voaafrica.com. Just go to the programs tab at the top of the page. I'm Vincent McCorry signing off from Washington. Well, we definitely look forward to bringing you another show next week. Check out our channel's website too. That's channelstv.com for all our local news and program information anytime, day or night. I'm Cynthia Arre. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.